Hey there, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin, I have a scrapbook layout for you today featuring the Are We There Yet collection from Close to My Heart. As you can see, these are some photos. We are visiting the Tower of Pisa and we were just having so much fun. It was all about forced perspective. So here is a three by four photo of me framing the shot. So you can see I'm crouched down. My friend stood behind me and snapped this photo. I didn't even know she was taking it, but I thought it was funny because this is the reality of it and then this is a result of the forced perspective shot so we were having a ton of fun uh, capturing different shots but I want to tell the story with these two photos here and if you see that little spot it's totally bugging me but I thought maybe I can hide that creatively with an embellishment I printed out the photo and my hands were wet and I dropped some water on it before the photo was dry so I was super bummed but I can reprint it, but before I do that, I'm going to see if I can cover that with an embellishment. So it'll be a challenge. I pulled a couple of the sheets from the collection. I definitely want to use this one. It has, it does have the Tower of Pisa on there, but it has several other, you know, kind of historic. There's the Roman Colosseum, the Eiffel Tower, and the Pyramids, Statue of Liberty. Very, very cool paper. And then this one here, this is actually the opposite side. It has this honey butter background with these white arrows. Now, I really like these for my photos. And this has that whole kind of architectural feel, which is perfect. And I pulled a couple from the, these are already cut into because I used them on another layout. These are from the Cordon or Current Mixin paper pack. So the Mixin are some great neutral patterns that are in colors to complement the paper pack. So you can see these colors go perfectly. So I definitely want to bring in some sapphire. I might use this to accent and stripe pattern papers like this are awesome because they allow you to bring in more colors to the layout and you can see all these gorgeous colors in the pattern paper. So let me just clear these out of the way. I have my Versamat here and then I have a piece of white daisy as my base. Now what I like to do before I cut into these is just kind of, I, I you know, do a layout similar to this quite a bit, but something where you can just kind of, I definitely want these on the yellow. I just think the contrast between the blue sky and the photo against that honey butter background is gorgeous. I really typically always, really typically always, that was a lot of unnecessary words, but I like to stagger my photos because it creates nooks and crannies for titles or embellishments or journaling um, you know sometimes I'll have them on the same line but printing them different sizes and then staggering them uh, opens it up for embellishing so I'm going to cut this down but I definitely want to you know kind of have that in there Tower of Pisa there's also a stamp so this is a little mini stamp it's so cute and there is one for each of these um, on the pattern paper. So I'm going to bring this one in as well. So I think that if we cut that at about six inches and then we'll take this to 11 inches across, that's going to have that, not that it matters, but I just thought, well, we'll make it work uh, because it's right next to the photos. And I thought that was kind of fun. And then maybe the 10 here. So having the measurements on the Versamat is really handy because I can already see where I need to cut these papers and rather than bringing in a ruler this just uh, saves you a step and makes it nice and easy. So I'm going to cut these down. I'll be right back. Okay so this one's 6 by 12 and then I cut this at 11 inches. I'm, I don't know about the bottom yet so I'm going to wait on that and then we can bring back in our photos and it, at first I was kind of thinking of making the title Forced Perspective, but I think I'm going to go with the classic Tower of Pisa and then just talk about Forced per Perspective in the journaling. So we need a little horizontal interest. So that's where I kind of bring in these papers. I can either go with the stripe or I can go with this one. I think I'm going to, I like the depth and just the richness of the sapphire background. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to cut a piece of that. Okay. So here we have a 12 by two inch piece. Again, this is just going to add some, uh, vertical or excuse me, horizontal lines and anchor our photos here. So I am going to cut out the back of this. So we're not wasting this paper here. 
and then I'm going to trim this down as well. So maybe right about there. Okay, so here is what I came up with. We have six by 11. And before I cut this, I just wanna bring everything in and make sure, and then I can gut out a piece behind there. So six by 11, and then we have our two by 12 inch strip here. So that'll sit right about there. And you know what? I want some of that yellow down here. I cut off just a tiny little strip here. Let's see. It's about three quarters of an inch by 11. And that way it'll just look like one continued piece behind the blue sapphire blue polka dot paper here. Perfect, I like it. So now to remove this piece, I know I've got two inches I need on the top, one inch on the side and an inch and a half on the bottom. So I can just use my uh, photo or paper trimmer to cut out a section to accommodate that. I actually am going to include this part in because I do get asked about this quite a bit. So remember I said we had two inches at the top. I always like to give it a little bit more because that way it's just easier to get those papers layered. So our piece is six inches. So we're gonna stop at, um, we're gonna give it an inch and a quarter even though we only need an inch. So go down to four and three quarters. And then we're gonna turn this now remember, we only needed an inch on the side, but we're giving ourselves more room. And it was about an inch. I'm gonna give myself two inches on the bottom. So we wanna stop at the 10 and then turn it one last time. And cut, and there you go. And now we can use this piece for another project. And I love this paper, so definitely going to be using that. Let me slide this back under here into place and hopefully it's gonna work out perfect. Measure twice, cut once, right? And look at that, just like we knew what we were doing. So I will go ahead and get all of these adhered off camera so you don't have to watch me gluing it down and then we'll get to the fun embellishing part. Now that we have uh, the base of our layout created, I want to work on the title and I think we're going to use the Moxie alphabet. This one's particularly fun. You have all the vowels are in lowercase and the rest of them are uppercase. You also get numbers and some punctuation. And this is available with the coordinating thin cuts. So the thin cuts come on one large, like eight and a half by 11 letter size sheet, but that didn't work for my storage setup. So what I did is I actually cut the magnetic sheet in half and then just put them back to back in this envelope. I get these on Amazon, so I will uh, leave that listed in the description box below. Close to My Heart has great envelopes for, like you can buy these envelopes separately for storage, which is nice, but there wasn't anything in this size. So you can find those again on Amazon. But let's go ahead and stamp out. I'm just going to use this for the word pizza, and then I'm gonna use a different alphabet font for the rest of my title. So there's actually two. These are pretty good size letters and there's two of them, two sheets in one envelope here. I'm going to use sapphire ink to stamp my letters. So let's go ahead and put the white daisy over the piece of foam and then we'll need the letter P. I like to lay that down and then pick it up with my block. Go ahead and get it nice and inky and then leave yourself enough room for the die because that's gonna leave that white margin. I like to have my stamp chamois. I just kind of moisten it each time, wring it out, lay it flat in the case and then I can clean these up as I go and it just helps me keep my work area tidy. I thought about stamping these on like a darker sapphire cardstock and then heat embossing them with white embossing powder because I love that look. But then I decided the sapphire, stamping them in sapphire on the white will probably look better against the background. So you can see that white border around the letters, how it just makes them really pop. I love that. I'm going to space these out over the top of my photo here. I'm going to use the memo alphabet. It's a tiny little stamp set and use that above to stamp out Tower Of. So I think that's gonna look good. I love mixing and matching fonts. So these are tiny little guides. Let me grab a little block. 
So we have a teeny tiny block and again our sapphire ink. Now anytime I'm stamping right on the layout, you can either put this foam directly under or flip your Versamat over. The whole back is foam and works the same as these little sheets. So when you are scrapping, or scrapping, stamping directly on, it's just nice to have all of that even surface back there. Let me grab my T-square ruler and just draw a little pencil line to make sure that's going to help me get my little letter straight here. So we just need a little line and then we'll erase that afterwards. So ink up. You could line up all of these little letters and pick them up and stamp them at once, but it takes me forever to get them perfectly situated on the block. So I like to just stamp them individually. And like I said, if you have that pencil line, it helps you get them on there straight and it's not a big deal. If they are a little wonky, it just adds to the handmade charm of your project. Embellishing is always my favorite part. I'm ready to bring in some stickers from the coordinating sticker sheet. I did remove the adhesive from the back of these so I can move them around. And I have a white daisy circle to stamp the Tower of Pisa on. I'm going to start layering these up. I always like to create kind of an L shape around my photos. So you know what, I think I want these down here. I do know I want the circle element in this lower corner. And then again, I'm gonna stamp the Tower of Pisa on that one. I mentioned in the beginning that the stripe pattern paper is great for introducing all of those colors. So I just cut a half inch strip and that's going to allow me to bring in that papaya color and have it make sense. So I'm going to use my little tags and tabs thin cut set here. You guys see me do this all the time. I just love to cut tag shapes and layer them behind my embellishment cluster. I'm going to sand this just a little bit to bring out that white core and add a little character character to this cardstock. Instant pop of color. Love it. This little sticker here is going to hide that water spot on my photo. And I do have the Are We There Yet card making workshop stamp. I actually bought this because I wanted the dies. The stamps are super cute, but I really wanted these dies. They have the faux stitching detail around the edge. And these are great for tucking and layering and just they're going to be a go-to for me. I also have this border stamp set that goes with the Are We There Yet collection. And I really like these because there's little tickets and all these tiny little icons on here that are very usable. Let me slide this out of the way to make room for stamping and grab a piece of white daisy. So these borders are super cute. There's like a camera and a compass, binoculars and a globe, and they just kind of repeat themselves. So I'm going to pick that up with my block and then stamp this onto the white daisy in sapphire ink. I love that stamping allows you to customize your ephemera to match and coordinate with your layout so easily. So we got that nice and inky, stamp it down, give it a second to soak in, and those are super cute. I'm also going to stamp a row of the tickets, and I do plan on cutting the tickets out individually, but again, how fun would it be to create some borders with those? So I use those little stitch tags. I cut papaya and glacier, and then these I die cut out. So you can see how easy it would be to add them to your project as is, but I'm going to just cut out a few of these little icons. I want the camera, so we'll cut around that. And using the die cut is nice because then you just have to cut them apart. And then I'm gonna use this little globe as well. These are going to be tiny, cute little accents to add to the embellishment cluster. And the extras I'm gonna tuck in the envelope. I actually like to stamp them a couple in different colors, and that way these are ready the next time I create with this particular collection. Close them up in the envelope, and that way you know right where to find those. Let me slide these out of the way, bring this back into the center, and then we'll add these to the embellishment cluster up on the upper left corner. This little ticket says explore your world, and then I have the camera and the globe. These tiny little embellishments would be lost on their own, but they're great for building up and layering your embellishments. My initial thought was to stamp this on the white daisy circle, but I think it's going to, oh, that's gonna fit perfectly. Change of plans, let's stamp this on this cute little luggage tag here with the faux stitching. So I have my sapphire ink again and lining that up. And then I will stamp the, it has the words Tower of Pisa right next to it. 
So let me clean that off, switch these out, and we will stamp those sideways running along the length of the tower. These little stamps are perfectly sized for traveler's notebooks as well. So something to think about if you're taking a trip and you have a traveler's notebook that you're taking along with you, perfect. You'll notice I have a little pop of the papaya color in the upper left-hand corner, and then just this little pop of papaya down here really complements that nicely. So I still need something in my circle. Maybe these little tags or word stickers that say landmark photo op. I don't like it in the tag. Let's put that back here and come up with something else. This stamp set is called Loving Right Now, and there are tons of fun little usable sayings and this cute camera. There is a camera on the Are We There Yet stamp, but it's a little bit too big for the circles. So I went ahead and stamped this one here in Sapphire, and we'll layer that. I'm gonna pop that up on foam dots. I just wanted to point out, if you were creating a double page layout, this is very nicely balanced. You can add a little strip journaling down in this area or even a three by four flip flap and you hide the journaling behind here. It could just flip up and you can have the story tucked behind that photo. But I know my double page layout people are going to be really happy. I decided to turn this into a double page layout. I cut all these pattern papers to mirror the left hand side. This is a great way to create a double page layout. It's kind of fail proof and it works really well. If you have a bunch of four by six photos, you can just kind of run them across the center there. So I have two additional photos. There's me pushing over the Tower of Pisa like whoops, there it goes. And then we have a group shot where we're using team effort to keep this landmark from toppling over. So these are really fun and I'm just going to uh, put those right over the sapphire just ever so slightly just like we did on this side. I'm going to transfer this entire embellishment cluster over to the right hand side. I'm not going to change anything. I'll put it right back how I have it. I'm going to tuck these under here and then we'll bring our little word stickers in over the bottom of the circle. I have repurposed an old happy planner and I have all of my markers swatched here on a swatch color chart because when they dry, they do change a little bit. So I'm just, I'm using my papaya and I think the medium coral shade is going to match well. So I want to add a little bit of color to the camera. Now I did stamp that in regular sapphire ink, which will bleed if you color over it. So I'm being very, very careful to avoid going over any any of the sapphire stamped areas. The camera just needed a little bit of interest and so I'm adding some of the coral color. And then if you wanna add some dimension to white images or light colored images, use either the ice gray or the brown gray and kind of go around the edge to give it some shadowing and it just really helps it. It's still a white image, but it gives it some dimension. I typed up my journaling and printed that out. I just want to point out I have changed some of the font to blue to draw attention to those words. I used to do this all the time and it's just really kind of fun to highlight specific words. I highlighted forced perspective, fun, laugh, silly, crowds, and that we arrived at 6 a.m. to avoid the crowds. So it's just kind of pulling out those, um, you know, big details of the story. I layered a papaya colored tag behind my journaling tag just for some, you know, a pop of color right there. This says, what a trip. That's from the coordinating sticker sheet. And then I die cut a tab from Sapphire Paper using the tabs die cut set. We'll layer this right underneath the sticker here. And you will also notice that I used some twine. I had some mink twine from my stash here and added some twine to each one of the tag tops to finish those off. You know me and my love for arrows. We can't not have an arrow. So this is gonna point from the camera to the Tower of Pisa. And then I'll pop that up on foam tape. And then I needed a third element up there. So I did another one of those tickets in Glacier. It says first class adventure. Let me add just one of these crisp air enamel dots. There's a little papaya colored heart and we'll finish the journaling tag off. I'm going to call this double layout done. If you picked up helpful tips or some fun ideas to try, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. It goes a long way in helping out my channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much for doing that.
Everything I have used to create today's project is listed in the description box below, so you can check that out for more information. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more layouts featuring this fun kit. And if you're looking for travel inspiration, then check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!